Let me guess what you're thinking. This video is all about why setting high expectations for yourself is actually a bad thing. Well, hate to break it to you, but actually you're wrong. Let me explain. What's up everybody, Karim Mosaid here, founder and host of the Trailblazer Uprising Show, your favorite place to unlock the lessons of nerd culture, to power up your life, and also your impact on the world. And just so you know how important you guys are to me, it is raining right now, and I am out here shooting a video, going on a walk, and I'm about to tell you a little story. But before we get started, let's talk about this misconception that so many people have, that it's bad to have high expectations for yourself that somehow by demanding more out of yourself, by expecting more out of yourself, that you're either not going to achieve it or that you're going to be disappointed and you're gonna be stressed out and it's not gonna work out for you. So let's get into it, right? There is a misconception out there that for some reason, it's better for you to have lower expectations for yourself than having higher expectations for yourself. It's almost as if they think having high expectations for yourself will make you less stressed or magically become more productive or something. And to illustrate this point, I wanna tell you a story. All right, story time. Today, we're talking about the best American cartoon ever animated, Avatar The Last Airbender. Not only does it have the most epic intro of any cartoon ever created. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. But it also tells a compelling story about our protagonist, Aang, the Avatar, who collects the ability to manipulate the elements in order to defeat the Fire Lord, Ozai. Now this big bad guy has plans to conquer the world, and Aang is trying to figure out a way to defeat him. Everyone he talks to tells him, Aang, bro, you need to kill this guy. He is a murderous psychopath. He's bent on world domination. And Aang, being the avatar, it looks back to his previous avatars and asks for advice and guidance. And what do they tell him? They tell him, Aang, you need to kill the guy. So everyone is telling him, Aang, kill this dude. He needs to die. He's evil. Evil needs to be killed. But Aang is just not comfortable with that. He doesn't want to give in to that. He has higher values and principles. And he thinks that he can get around this. He can defeat Fire Lord Ozai without actually having to kill him. Fast forward to the final fight and Aang is in full avatar mode. It's awesome. He is bending water and wind and earth and fire and fighting against Ozai. And he gets to the last moment where he's about to strike him down with one final blow. But he decides, nah, not gonna do it. Of course, Ozai mocks him and says, you're weakling, you have the power, you're the most powerful being in the world, and still you decide not to do it. And that's when Aang remembers the lion turtle. A while back, Aang connected with this spiritual creature that gave him the ability to bend energy, to bend spirit, to bend his will. The lion turtle teaches Aang that darkness always yields to light. The turtle also teaches him that a long time ago, people didn't used to bend the elements, they used to bend the energy within themselves. Mm. The turtle also gives him a warning and tells him that if he's going to use this power, he needs to have an unbendable spirit. So at the end of our fight, Aang imprisons Ozai and bends his ability to bend. He bends his spirit. And so for a second there, we kind of freak out because it looks like Ozai's evil will is going to overcome the pure will of Aang. But no, he overcomes, he doesn't bend, he doesn't falter, and he takes away Ozai's ability to bend at all. All of his fire bending powers are taken away. So what do we learn from the story? I'll tell you right now. The thing that made Avatar Aang so amazing and quite possibly the best avatar of all time, the one to win the Hundred Years War and to put an end to the chaos and destruction of the Fire Nation to defeat Ozai was his ability and his willingness to stick to his values and to his principles. If you think about it, Aang really stuck to his ideals. He had this kind of stupid idea in his head, if you think about it, that he wasn't going to kill probably the biggest threat the world had ever seen. He somehow decided that he just wasn't going to kill him, that he was gonna come up with another way. What a dumb idea, right? I mean, you're the Avatar, for goodness sake. I mean, you're the most powerful being on the planet and you could easily take down this guy. But that's what makes Avatar Aang so special. 
That's what makes him Avatar Aang. That he decides that he doesn't want to do that. That he's going to stick to his values and to stick to his ideals. So let's bring this idea home a little bit. See, Aang had super high expectations of himself. He wanted to defeat the most powerful person on the earth, besides him, and he wanted to do it without having to kill him. He wanted to put him down and remove him as a menace to society without doing anything that was going to end his life. Well, if those aren't high standards, I don't know what are. Look guys, sometimes we cede control of a situation. We think we have no other option. We think there's no other way. We get a little bit helpless and a little bit hopeless. Think that there's no other option. There's no way for us to get around the obstacle that's in our way. So what happens? We settle, we give up, we lower our standards, we lower our expectations. But Avatar Aang is a great example of someone who didn't do that. He said, no, I'm going to find a way. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to get what I want and I'm going to get it the way that I want. And that's why the lion turtle's advice is actually super relevant to us too. You know, this whole technique of setting high expectations for yourself, it only works if you have an unbendable spirit. You need to be absolutely doggedly determined to persevere to make this thing happen no matter what. It's the only way that this is gonna work, you know? Otherwise, you'd wind up compromising your ideals, you'd wind up, you know, finding a different way that wasn't the way that you wanted, uh, you'd probably wind up lowering your expectations of yourself and lowering your standards. That's why I love this quote by one of my faves, Marie Forleo. She says, everything is figure outable and it's so bite-sized and like a cute little snippet, but it actually, it's so profound. Everything is figure outable. As long as you have that unbendable spirit, you can bend reality to your expectations and your standards. All right, can I get like really personal for a second here? I think this example is really gonna bring it home for you. So I like to think that I have high standards in my life for a lot of things, not everything. And one of those things is my marriage and my family. I like to think of myself like an aspiring Jack Pearson from This Is Us. I definitely see myself in him, you know? Something I really try to do, I really try to own that. Try to do it well. I have high standards in that department. Now, obviously I'm not even close to being anything like Jack Pearson. I didn't die for the love of my family. I mean, come on, that's an impossibly high standard to follow. Are you willing to raise this young boy into a strong man? Yes, sir. Are you willing to push him to be the best man in the world he can be? Yes. I mean, it's fiction after all. Look at me making excuses for myself. So I know I say I have high expectations for myself. I have high standards for myself. No, I think I have high standards for myself, but do I really have high standards for myself? I guess what I'm trying to say is, I want you to question yourself and really challenge yourself. And actually, I'm going to challenge you. Don't just watch this video and then think like, oh yeah, I need to raise my standards. I need to have higher expectations of myself. And then look at those areas that you already have high expectations and think that you're fine there. No. Actually, you need to raise the standard there as well. You need to question and see if you really do have those high standards there and if you're actually living up to them or not. Oh, and uh, one last thing on the subject of raising your standards. See, Aang demanded more of himself and he got more of himself because of his unbending will. Now, in the same way, I wanna challenge you. Demand more of yourself, ask more of yourself, and you will get more. I know there's this fear that you're gonna be stressing yourself out or asking too much of yourself or setting expectations and expectations lead to disappointment and disappointment leads to unhappiness. But how about the opposite? How about you sit there like a pile of mush, have no expectations for yourself? You're not gonna go anywhere, right? And that's not what this channel is all about. It's about inspiring you to take the steps, to make the moves, to motivate you to do better in your life. Well, that about wraps up today's video. Hope you liked it. If so, hit that like button. Do it right now, let YouTube know, and leave me a comment and let me know what is that one area, that one thing that you're working on that you're gonna raise that expectation on. Let me know in the comments below this video or better yet, back on this post at trailblazeruprising.com. And for more advanced training and inspiration that I only share with my subscribers, head back to trailblazeruprising.com and sign up for my newsletter. And remember folks, don't ask for permission. Make every moment of your life meaningful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Trailblazer Uprising Show. Peace!
So I'm out here filming and bump into a dude about to play basketball. His name's Chris. Nice guy. Meet my new subscriber. Hey. Wanted to give him a shout out. Thanks for subscribing, Chris. Woo! Just broke it. I feel like a windbender right now. Still recording? But uh, <laughs> that's all, folks. <laughs> that's all.